So in our very first section, we're going to go through percentages, pie charts, and bar graphs. So if you just think about stuff in your everyday life, you're allocating your time to a lot of different pieces. Same thing with a budget. You have a certain income, you're allocating portions of your budget to different categories. So what we want to do is we want to go through a couple different ways of how we can talk about what portion that takes up, and then how can we also display this information. So thinking about just a typical 24-hour period, um, you spend your time on a variety of different activities. So maybe this is someone's Saturday, it's broken down into a couple different categories, sleeping, eating, doing homework, um, and then entertainment of some sort, like watching TV and doing video games. So this chart goes through what we've done on an hourly basis, but it's not a great visual because you can't really see uh, patterns or anything going on. So what we're going to start with is we're going to figure out on these four different categories, how many hours of our day did we spend doing each of them? So if we start with the sleeping category, if I go ahead and kind of highlight all the sleep hours, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hours that we spent sleeping. Moving on to the eating category, we have one, two, three hours that we spent eating and prepping for those meals. Then since this was a Saturday, we spent a good amount of time relaxing. So if we look at how many hours we spent either watching TV or playing video games, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hours of our day. And then last but not least, doing our homework, it's gonna be one, two, three, four hours. So this is the amount of time we spent in each category. And again, it gives us a decent visual so we can see where most of our times went. But what we can also do is see the percentage we spent doing each of these things. So since the total of 24 hours in our single day was spent doing each of these activities, we can find the percentage of our day in each category. So what we do to find the percentage is one of two things. First, we have something that's called the decimal form of a percentage, and that's just basically going to be something between zero and one. So what we do to find the decimal form is we take that portion and we divide it by the total amount. So the decimal form of a percent will result in a decimal between zero and one. for most cases. Okay. So if you have something that's 120%, like in terms of you overspent your budget, it might be different from there. The percentage is really the same information, but it looks in that natural form where you get something between zero and 100%. So the only difference for this is we take the decimal form of the percentage and we multiply it by 100. And what that really does is it just moves the decimal two spaces right. Okay. So if you have a decimal form of a percentage, you can immediately find the true percentage from there. So to just kind of give you a little an example, if you have 0 0.08 as a percentage, what you would do is move that twice to the right, and this would be 8%, okay? So you want to pay attention just in your homework as to what decimal you need to round things out to. Um, it's going to give you the directions always. If it doesn't say to round, that means it should be a nice number. So what we're going to do is based on this person's Saturday, we're going to find the percentage spent in each of these activities. And what we're going to round to is this thousandth place. And what that means is really we want to round to three decimals. Okay. If it's hundredths, that's the two decimal places. If it's tenth, that would be one decimal place. And so for this one, we're going to round to three decimals for that decimal form, and then we'll turn it into a percentage. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go back and fill in the number of hours in each of these. Remember, we spent nine hours sleeping, three hours eating, eight hours watching TV, and four hours doing homework. So the total amount of hours we have for this particular day 
is exactly what we would expect. If you take nine plus three plus eight plus four, it's going to give you that total of 24 hours. So this is our entire day. Now, all we're gonna do to find the decimal of form of each of these is we're gonna take this particular portion and we're gonna divide it by the whole amount, which in this case is 24. So for the sleeping category, my decimal form of the percentage would be nine divided by 24. And if you plug this into your calculator, it is an exact number. It's 0.375, okay? So what I'm gonna do to find the actual percentage is I just take this number and I times it by 100%. And all that does is again, move the decimal two spaces to the right. So 0.375 is the same thing as saying 37.5%. Now I just continue doing this for every single other category. For eating, it's three out of the 24 hours. And if you plug this one into your calculator, you see it is a nice number, 0.125. And so again, I don't need to plug in my calculator this times 100. All I'm gonna do is move that decimal two times to the right. So 0.125 is the same as 12.5%. For these next two categories, you'll see we don't get as nice of a number. So if we do eight divided by 24, you're gonna see those numbers continue on forever. So this would be 0.333, okay? Really what you're gonna see in your calculator is this is gonna be 0.33333 and it's repeating. So when you want to round to three decimal places, I wanna take a look at this third spot. The number after that is going to be what determines what happens to this. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and look at the next number, which is a three. And if this is a zero, a one, a two, a three, or a four, the highlighted number, the third position is going to stay exactly the same. So these will disappear completely. So then to get this as that percentage, we go ahead and move that decimal two spaces to the right, and 0.333 is going to be about 33.3%. Okay. For this next one, if you take four and divide it by 24 in your calculator, you see you get something different. So this is gonna continue on forever. It's 0.1666666, and then you'll see, depending on how many places your goes out to, it will end in a seven. So again, I wanna round this to three decimal places, so I'm gonna take a look at the third number. This is the one that can potentially change. And in here, because the digit after that is pretty high, it's actually closest to the next number. So in this case, I'm going to round up. So if the spot after the digit you're rounding to is a five, six, seven, eight, or nine, you're going to bump this number up by one. So in this case, I'm gonna get rid of all of these and I'm gonna round up. So this six is going to change to a seven, the very next number. And then to get that percentage, we go ahead and move the decimal two spaces to the right. So it is 16.7%, okay? Now what should happen here, because every single one of these 24 hours should be allocated for, these should total up to the equivalent of 100%. So what I wanna do is I wanna just check that I've rounded everything correctly, and the way I can do that is by adding them all together. So if we add all of these decimal forms, the 0.375 plus 0.125 plus 0.333 plus 0 or 167, you'll see this adds up to 1.00, okay? And that's what I want because if you move this decimal two spaces to the right, that's exactly 100%. 100% of my day is allocated for, okay? And same thing over here, if I add these percentages, 
37.5% plus 12.5% plus 33.3% plus 16.7% plus 16.7%, plus 16.7%, plus 16.7%, plus 16.7%. You'll see this gives you the full 100%. So if you ended up with like 99.8 or something like that, that would be an indication that you probably just made a rounding error somewhere in there, okay? So the nice thing about this is you can always find a percentage for something. Um, but in this very unique instance, because our entire day was split into one of these categories, what we can do is actually create something called a pie chart, or you might hear it also called a circle graph. And what that does is it basically considers your day this full circle. And so I'm gonna break this pie down into different slices that account for that same percentage. So in this case, a circle is going to consist of 360 degrees. So what I need to do for each of these categories that I have up here, my sleeping category should take up 37.5% of those degrees. Same thing with eating, it should take 12.5% of those degrees. So what I'm gonna do to figure out how many degrees each slice will take up is I'm gonna take my total amount for this circle, which is 360 degrees, and I'm gonna multiply it by the decimal form of the percentage. I don't wanna take 360 and times it by 37.5 because that would give me this huge number and that's not going to make a lot of sense. So when you're finding a particular portion, instead what you're going to do is you're going to use the decimal form of the percentage, okay? So what this does, once you find out the decimals or once you multiply the 360 by the decimal form of the percentage, it's gonna give you the amount of degrees that slice should take up. That's something that's called the central angle. So it's gonna be this measure from here to here. The whole rotation around is 360 degrees. So we're gonna break it up into pieces that we can see. So using the same exact information, we're gonna go ahead and figure out how many degrees this particular slice would take up on a pie chart, or what is the central angle for this slice. So I'm gonna start by filling in those decimal forms of the percentage that we found, 0 0.375, 0 0.125, 0 0.333, and 0 0.167 which totals to 1.00. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 360 degrees, which is the total amount of a circle, and I'm going to times it by this decimal, 0.375. Okay. And if you plug this into your calculator, you would see this one is going to be exactly 135. So what that tells me is on my pie chart, the sleeping slice should take up 135 degrees, okay? So what you can also do to kind of see the connections, if you take 135 and divide it by 360, it gives you exactly 37.5%. So this 135 is representing 37.5% of the circle, okay? So now you just do the same thing for all of the other slices. We take 360 degrees and times it by 0.125, and this will give you 45 degrees. Then for these next ones, it's not going to be perfect because again, these were also rounded numbers. So we're taking 360 and timesing it by 0.333. In this case, it doesn't have any directions. I'm gonna just round to the nearest um, whole number because I can't plot a portion of a degree anyway. So if you plug this into your calculator, you would see this is about 120 degrees. And then finally, for this last category of the homework, if I take 360 and times it by 0.167, you would see this is about 60 degrees, okay? And so same idea, I'm gonna add all of these up because the entire degrees on my circle should be accounted for. 
So if you take 135 degrees, add 45, add 120, and add 60, you would see you get that full amount of the circle, 360 degrees. So when you actually create the pie chart, what you're gonna typically see is it's broken down into a couple different slices. So here, if I start at zero and I go all the way around, that's 360. So what I've done in this case is I've broken it down into smaller chunks and each one of these slices is going to be 30 degrees. So we can really add two extra marks within here to represent 10 degrees. This would be 10 degrees, then 20, then 30. Just do this next one, 40 degrees, 50 degrees, 60 degrees. And then the same pattern continues. I just don't wanna muddle up everything in here. But every single one of these lines is going to represent 10 degrees, okay? Now, depending on the book you use, um, it's going to be different for every single one. Typically, what tends to happen is you want to start with your biggest slice and then go decreasing order from there. So we take the biggest category, and that's going to represent the first thing, and then the smallest and the smallest from there. So going back to each of our slices... The sleeping slice is the most, it's 135 degrees. So this is gonna be the one that I draw first. After that, the next biggest slice is going to be watching TV. So we'll draw this one second. Then it's homework. And then last but not least is going to be the eating slice. So we're gonna do the slices in this particular order. So starting with our sleeping slice, it should take up 135 degrees. So what we do here is I'm gonna start by indicating here's where this first slice begins at zero degrees. And I wanna to go to 135, which is somewhere in between 120 and 150. So remember each of these is going to represent 10. So this would be 130 degrees here. This would be 140. 135 is going to be half a slice, so in between these two values. So what we do starting from that center is we're going to go out to that endpoint. So this central angle here would be 135 degrees. Okay. And so this is going to represent our sleeping slice. So I'm going to go ahead and color this in. This entire piece is 37.5% of a circle, and it is representing how much of our day we spent sleeping. Okay. So then I'm just gonna write on the category, that's what this is. And again, it just depends on what kind of information you wanna convey. You can say it's 37.5%. You can put that this is accounting for nine hours really up to you what kind of information you want to display. Okay. But our ending value down here is 135 degrees. Now, from this endpoint, we want to pick up with the next slice, which is going to be 120 degrees. So what I need to do is starting from here, I want to go 120 degrees in this direction. So to figure out where the next slice ends, I'm going to take 135 and I'm going to add the 120 degrees. So if we do that, this slice should end at the 255 degree mark because I want this angle here to be 120 degrees. So marking that off, this is going to be 240 right here, which means this is 250, this is 260. So 255 is going to be halfway in between those two values. Okay. So this is going to be our watching TV slice. Which represents 33.3% of our day or it's a total of eight hours, okay? So let's go ahead and change this to the same color because we have the writing in black. And then I'm gonna color in this slice. This portion is representing 
one third or 33.3 percent of our day okay and again this central angle here is exactly 120 degrees now we've got our last two pieces and so our third one is going to be the homework slice and that's going to be 60 degrees so doing the same thing, this slice is going to start where the last one ended, and I have to have that angle be 60 degrees. So we ended at 255. If I add 60 degrees to that, this slice should end at the 315 degree mark. So here's 300, 310, 320. So 315 is right there in the middle, okay? So filling this in, this is our third slice, which is representing how much time we spent doing homework, which was 16.7% of our day or a total of four hours. Okay. And then really at this point, you only have one slice left. It's the eating, it's 45 degrees. You don't need to do the work because it's going to be this remaining piece right here. But just to show you that everything does match up, what we would do is this slice starts at 350 degrees, 315 degrees. And if you add 45 degrees to it, it lands you at 360, which is the same marker as zero because we've gone one full loop around for 360 degrees. So this is our last category, which is the eating slice. We spent 12.5% of our day doing this or a total of three hours. So pie charts are super nice for these visuals because it really gives you a clear indication as to where your day is going. It's especially helpful in a budget because if you're seeing one slice is taking up a huge chunk of your circle, well, then you know maybe we need to get that down to make things more reasonable. But the problem is we can't always do this with every type of information or chart that we have. Because if you have overlapping categories, it's not going to make sense because this is really unique that we fell into very distinct categories. I didn't spend one hour doing both of these things. It was broken down into this is what I did during this time frame. So in the case that you do have overlap, you can't use a pie chart, but we can use what's called a bar chart, or we'll see later, we also can call it a histogram to visualize and still be able to make some comparison. So let's say we had a survey with our class. So I'm gonna use one of the ones I had from my previous semesters. There was a total of 25 students in the class. And I went and I surveyed and I asked them a bunch of questions and I included myself in that number. And if they answered yes to any of these, they had to raise their hand. So the first statement, I live with a parent, 19 of those 25 students agreed. The number of students that were born before 2000 was two, one of them being myself. The number of students that had kids was zero. The number of students that had pets was 20 and the number of students that had a sibling was 23. Okay. The problem is I can still talk about the percentage of the class that lives with a parent, was born before 2000, has kids, has a pet, but I can't break this down because I alone answered yes to multiple of these questions. My name is fit here, here, and here. So I belong to three separate categories. So since it's not unique where each person goes, I can't talk about total percentages or pie charts anymore. Because if I add all these numbers together, if you take 19 plus two plus zero plus 20 plus 23, it gives you a total of 64 students. But there's only 25 students in the class. So there's no way 
that I can break my pie chart into equal slices. It does not make sense. Okay. The other way we can see this, we can still find the percentage of students that lived with their parents. There were nine, or there were nineteen out of twenty-five students that lived with a parent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take nineteen divided by twenty-five, and this ends up being a really nice number. It's 0.76. Okay, so that's that decimal form to get that percentage. We move it twice. This means seventy-six percent of the class lives with a parent. Okay, the number. A student that was born before 2000 was 2 out of 25. So if you plug that into your calculator, you should see it's 0 0.08. So again, for that percentage, you can multiply by 100 or move the decimal twice. But this would be equivalent to 8%. The percentage that had kids is 0 out of 25, which is nice. 0 divided by anything is 0. And so zero as a decimal form is equivalent to 0%. The number of students that had a pet is 20 out of 25. Plugging that into your calculator, you'll see it's 0.8. So in this case, when you move that decimal twice, you have a blank spot. So all that means is fill it in with a zero. So 0.8 is equivalent to 80%. Then finally, in the number of students that had siblings is 23 out of 25, which is 0.92 as a decimal. And so moving that decimal twice to the right is 92% of students. And again, if I add these numbers up, it doesn't give me anything that makes sense. 76 plus 8 plus 80 plus 92, the zero does nothing is well over 100%. So I cannot have a live with the parent slice that takes up 76% of my circle and then a pet slice that takes up 80% of my circle. That makes more than a single circle here, okay? But I can still compare the size of these because I wanna see what's more essential or more representative of this particular group of people. So I can make this comparison with the numbers and I can see that there's a high number for live with the parents, has a pet and siblings and a low amount, but we can actually just do a bar graph to really get a clear visual of everything going on. So a bar graph or a bar chart is really just going to have a bar to represent the total number of responses. The thing you have to be conscientious of is you wanna make sure you add scales and labels so that your reader knows what's going on. So for this, we've got the polling responses from our class, and we've got all the different categories in the bottom here. And so by scale, it means I need to figure out a scale that's going to account for my biggest response. So the most I can have is going to be 25. So I want to find a scale to represent that. So in this case, if I count by ones, probably not going to get all the way to 25 on these lines. If I count by fives, then I've really kind of used not much of my information or not much of my chart, because this would be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. We only go about halfway up there. And that's not great because then it's hard to kind of figure out when I have a response of 19 students where that would go. So in this case, I think the easiest scale that I'm gonna do is counting up by twos. So this flat bar is going to represent no students. Then we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. Okay. And so that scale works out. And now for each of these, I just want to draw a bar up to that total number that responded for that category. So going back to our live with the parents response, this should represent 19 students. So starting from zero for live with the parent, I'm gonna go up to 19, which is just halfway in between the 18 to 20. And then I just create a bar and then we fill it in, okay? 
So this gives us a representation or a visual representation for how many responded yes to this category. For the I was born before 2000, two students said yes to that. So again, I'm going to draw a bar, which is the same width, and I'm going to go up to two to represent the two students that said yes to this. For the I have kids, it was nothing, so you really don't even need to draw anything at all here. Nobody answered yes. Then for the number of students that had pets, that was 20. So again, starting from zero, we go up to the bar that represents 20 or that dotted line. And this gives us a visual for how many students had a pet. For has siblings, that was 23. So starting from here, we go up all the way. This would represent 24. So we go halfway in between the best that we can draw and then go all the way down. And this gives us the visual for the number of students that have siblings. So again, really useful and helpful to get good visualizations as to what's going on because just thinking about anything you see in the news, you're getting lots of charts. You're going to get pie charts. You're going to get bar charts. You're going to get other types of charts thrown at you. But they're really nice way to kind of see as what to see what's going on within that particular topic.